What do you know about the bell? For decades there have been scattered rumors of the D-Glock, meaning the bell. A space-going UFO-like craft developed by the World War II Nazis. Mounting evidence is now confirming that the Nazi era Germans developed advanced technology that allowed them to make covert missions in the universe. New resurfaced documents and personal interviews confirm a secret Nazi space program. It is reported that Nazi technology allowed Germans to travel beyond the Earth using a design called the Nazi Bell or D Glock. At the heart of the German space program, the Nazi Bell may have played a role in the development of Earth based UFO technology. But before we go that far, what was the Nazi Bell actually? Those who claimed the Nazis visited the Moon, Mars, and possibly the other solar systems often speak of the evidence of the bell. This craft had an unknown energy source that was capable of powering a sustained flight beyond Earth's orbit. Even though this energy technology was unknown to the rest of the world, it was a central component of the German secret space program that had begun more than a century before. Many refer to the bell as Wunderwaffe, translating to Wonder Weapon in English, with its white bottom and relatively narrow top similar in the profile to a church bell. d Grow got its name due to its shape. Witnesses said that the bell craft was 12 to 15 feet high and 12 feet wide. Those who claim to have the knowledge of the bell say it was fabricated with very hard and heavy metal along with the lighter metal referred to as rage metal. These witnesses said that the designers of the bell also used the barium peroxide and thorium peroxide. The bell was said to have an effect zone stretching between 490 and 660 feet around the craft. Some claim that unexplainable things occurred within this zone, such as the formation of crystals within animal tissue, the decomposition of plant matter into a greasy substance, and the jarring and separation of blood. The bell frying saucer was said to be powered by a liquid fuel known as Serum 525 or Zilam 525. Insider witnesses described the fuel as cherry red, velvet, or maroon in color with a vicious dense texture. Some witnesses include Arthur Henry Stevens, who claimed this liquid was actually lead mercury. This Zeram 525 was placed in large counter-turning cylinders that span at high speeds. The rapid spinning, combined with the highly charged electrostatic tube, created anti-gravity propulsion that powered spaceships to considerable heights and rates of travel. But basically, gravity is a force. It's uh, it well, it's the inherent property of matter to have gravity, a mutual attraction for each other. Historians with a penchant for conspiracy theories claim the German flying bell was housed in a facility referred to as Der Ries or the Giant in English. Der Ries was located near the Wenceslas mine, within driving distance of the Czech border. After the close of World War II, many Nazis were tried at war crime tribunals for crimes against humanity and violations of human rights. One defendant was Jakob Sporenberg, a former Nazi SS Opengruppenführer, one of the highest commissioned Nazi SS ranks. A Polish war crimes court tried Sporenberg for the murder of 60 German engineers, scientists, and technicians. In his court affidavit, Sporenberg gave details of the Nazi Bell project, calling it, D. Glock. Describing the secrecy surrounding the bell, Sporenberg admitted that the scientists and engineers were murdered to prevent them from disclosing any details of the technology with those outside the program to the outside world. According to Sporenberg's affidavit, the bell was a highly advanced technology that produced a hissing, or buzzing sound when in operations. He noted that because of the sound, his fellow Germans referred to the bell as Der Bienenstock, the German word for beehive. But evidence of the existence of the Nazi bell does not end with Sporenberg. Many conspiracy theorists point to the paintings of the late 19th century artist, Charles Delschau, as additional evidence of the bell's earlier existence. Delschau's images of the anti-gravity bell might be an indication that German engineers had knowledge of the bell long before it was actually deployed during World War II. Some even claim that Delshaw's bell paintings are evidence that he was in contact with hyper-intelligent extraterrestrials with a pro-Nazi agenda. Delshaw painted highly detailed images of the craft prior to the Nazi's bell project. The artist was a member of the cryptic, German Sonora Aero Club Collective, a group that constructed exploratory aircraft designs. Delshaw's craft was identical to what would soon be dubbed, D-Glock, the German bell.
If Del Xiao had completed only one painting, it easily could be shrugged off as a coincidence. However, he painted hundreds of craft that look strikingly similar to the bell. Those who believe in the Nazi bell technology often point to the writings of several authors, including, Igor Witkowski. Witkowski is a contemporary Polish author, editor and military journalist. In 2003 he published his book, Prada o Wunderwaffe, which translates to, The Truth About the Wonder Weapon. The book includes a detailed description of the bell craft. Witkowski's book was eventually reprinted in Germany under the title, Die Wahrheit über die Wunderwaffe. In his text, Witkowski refers to the futuristic German UFO technology as the Nazi bell. He reports that he first discovered evidence of the bell in 1997 while poring over classified transcripts from Sporenberg's Polish war crimes court testimony. Witkowski says he also received the documents from an unnamed individual who had worked within Poland's intelligence community. He adds that unfortunately, he was not permitted to make copies of the records, and could only transcribe their content. Witkowski also claims that five of the seven early Bell project engineers perished during testing. He writes that the Bell's test rig ruins can be found in a concrete structure at a Wenceslas mine located about two miles from the complex Sokolek subterranean project Rees works in Poland. According to Witkowski, the Bell was eventually moved to a South American country governed by a group of Nazi sympathizers. Nick Cook was a military journalist and author. Expanding on Witkowski's writings about the Nazi bell, Cook provided his own opinions and research in his book, The Hunt for Zero Point. Cook believes the bell was eventually transported to the United States as per an agreement between SS General Hans Kammler and American officials. In Henry Stevens' 2007 book, Henry writes that the violet-hued fuel used to power the bell was red mercury, as conventional mercury does not contain fluid compounds. Stevens also tells a story of a German scientist, Otto Cerny, who told a teenage Greg Rowe about special Third Reich technology that utilized a concave mirror atop a device believed to be the Nazi bell. Rowe claims Cerny told him this device was even capable of generating images from the past. A slew of other writers, including Jim Mars and Joseph P. Farrell, have made mention of the bell in their publications, often associating this, Wunderwaffen, or, Miracle Weapon, with Nazi occultism, free energy, and anti-gravity research. Many conspiracy theorists agree that the Nazis shifted the bell's location to the Arctic Circle or South America following the execution of their top scientists. It has been said that Nazi leaders continued their secret space program by developing UFO technologies and communicating with extraterrestrial beings through channelings in the years following World War II. Some theorists believe that a handful of Nazi leaders traveled to the Aldebaran solar system with the Bell technology, and that extraterrestrials telepathically transferred other UFO schematics to mediums. Others believe the Nazis still have secret UFO development bases in the Arctic that have yet to be discovered by the outside world.